Good morning, everyone. Uh, Bob Ravenscroft, the Vice President for Advancement. It is April 15th. Uh, today, who we have with us is uh, Dr. Rich Lloyd, PhD doctor. He is the president of Bryan College of Health Sciences and John Woodrich, the chief executive officer of uh, Bryan Medical Center. You know, just real quickly before the stats to start off with, on the odd chance we have middle school or high school students tuning in today and you like science or you have a calling to help people, or maybe it's for their parents or grandparents turning in, our college has about 775 students. They're high achievers. When they graduate, they're highly sought after. They secure well-paying jobs, and they go on to do great things for uh, communities and patients. They certainly serve Brian very well with about half of them staying here and another half going throughout Nebraska to communities and hospitals, heck, throughout the world as well. So I know you'll enjoy hearing uh, from Rich, and, and it's, a, it's a great opportunity, again, for students who like uh, science or have a calling to serve people right here in Lincoln. Um, real quickly, our midnight census, we, have th at, we had 385 patients in our 535 staff beds um, as of midnight, and again, we're licensed for 640 beds. Our Brian Easy Visit screening questionnaires, there have now been 9,174 of them completed. Uh, resulting in 2,644 easy visit um, visits and 1,223 use the COVID promo code. Again, a great entry point if you're not feeling well to get care and find out if you, if you might need COVID treatment. Um, overall, the numbers, we have now tested 1,535 throughout the Bryan Network, over 1,000 of those coming through our drive through clinic. We now have 68 positive results from those tests, uh, 1,373 thankfully negative, and we have 94 that are pending. Um, before I call Rich up here, just a primer for Thursday and Friday, in addition to John and I with the routine stuff. Um, we're going to have uh, someone from our nursing team, either Lisa Bell or Marsha Bells, one of our directors, talk about um, a local startup, Noble, that piloted some things at Bryan uh, that is proving to be invaluable for keeping patients and families connected now. So we're excited to bring that. And then there's some really great stuff going on in the medical community and partnerships in the community. Dr. Nora talked about things like convalescent plasma treatment. Uh, there's some movement there, and on either Thursday or Friday, we're going to bring some information to you on that as well. So with that, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Rich Lloyd, president of Bryan College of Health Sciences. Thank you, Bob. I'm Rich Lloyd, president of the college. I've had the honor of serving as president for the past four years. First, a shout out and thank you to our students and to my colleagues especially our faculty, our educational technology instructional design staff, and our library staff who continue to educate, share learnings, and innovate during this challenging time. We, like colleges across the country, moved our face-to-face -face and hybrid courses online at the end of March. Two of our graduate programs, our MSN and EDD, are already online, so they were able to continue their courses without disruption. One of the hallmarks of a Bryan education is the number of clinical hours our students experience. In our nursing program, for example, the number of clinical hours, 1,215, exceeds all other nursing programs in the state. So beyond just moving theory courses online, we've had to consider how to address clinical hours. I'm extremely proud of our faculty who have designed and facilitated clinical experiences that meet our course outcomes and our graduating seniors have been able to continue their clinicals with their preceptors, and we are extremely grateful to those preceptors for their continued support. In sonography, we graduate our CVT students in May. Since this is a double major, our students complete well above any clinical hours in the area. Our seniors, even with some reduction, will have completed over 1,900 clinical hours and have already met their clinical and program outcomes. Our graduating Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia practice students have already met the national requirements for clinical experiences and did so by mid-March. In that program, we routinely exceed the minimum 2,000 clinical hours by 50%. As a result, we've been able to keep our graduating students, both undergraduate and graduate, on track 
and we will celebrate their degrees during our virtual commencement on May 8th. We plan to offer that ceremony utilizing Facebook Live. We know the ritual of graduation to recognize our students' academic achievement is important in the student's life and in the life of our college. So one of the things we did right away was to mail out caps and gowns and hoods to our graduating students and ask them to put them on and send us back a picture so we can include their photos in our celebration and share that gowning up hat on moment with their families and loved ones. We are also looking at opportunities after graduation to recognize the wonderful accomplishments of our students and those options are being reviewed. Our graduates are prepared and they're eager to enter their chosen career paths or graduate or professional schools and provide further support to the heroic efforts of healthcare professionals here at Bryan, across our state, our region, and nation. In one of my very first communications to students about our instructional plans, I noted that students and staff may be called upon to provide volunteer or working support at the medical center. Within minutes of sending out my note, one of our students wrote back that she was a CNA and was ready to help whenever needed. Since that, how can I help has become a mantra and repeated itself over and over again in the halls of the college. Even during such challenging times, such as the character of our students, faculty, and staff. I send out regular updates each week to our college community. In last Friday's message, I included the following personal reflection. Last week, on a beautiful spring evening in Lincoln, my spouse and I were taking a long walk down in the Hallmark Haymarket where we live. Until recently, such walks consisted of hellos, hey there's, how are you's, and sometimes a sorry, my bad, as the often crowded sidewalks only have room for so many shoes. I remember at times over the past years wishing it weren't so crowded that I could have more space, fewer encounters, and fewer people walking where I was walking. I realized that evening, in the quiet and solitude of that night, that my desire had been fulfilled. There we were, walking, with no one around us, no one to bump into, no one to say hi or say sorry to. We turned a corner and saw another couple walking. We were at the opposite ends of the block and we stopped, a bit unnerved as we focused on maintaining social distance. I raised my hand, acknowledging that we saw them, and then I pointed, a Nebraska symbolic one finger wave indicating the direction we would go so that our paths wouldn't cross. The other couple raised their hands as well, returning our separating hello. We crossed, avoiding each other, safer in our own air. And I remember wishing that wish of mine away. How nice it would have been to engage another couple and say hello and perhaps strike up a conversation. Soon, I said to myself, soon. And I also said soon to students and staff, soon. I can't wait to turn a corner in the college and see everyone and say hello and how are you doing, relishing the space between. Until that soon becomes a reality, we continue to reach out to our college family through our courses, through messaging, through social media, through Facebook Live events that have included really cool lectures and demonstrations by our faculty. We also published our college coloring book, and we have plenty of copies if anyone would like one for themselves or members of their family, and I have a copy here with me today. At the college, we are called the Blue Healers. Healing work is noble work, and we are proud to educate and graduate students who will live such lives of meaning and purpose in the coming days, months, and years. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. I'm John Woodridge, CEO of Bryan Medical Center, and I wanted to break down some of the numbers that Bob had shared with you earlier. So currently we have 23 uh, patients in-house. Of the 23 uh, related to COVID, uh, six are COVID positive, uh, 17 are pending results, 10 of those 17 are from Lancaster County, seven are from outside of our county. Of these 23 individuals, uh, three are on a vent. Uh, broken down by the different areas, we have nine of the patients are in ICU. 
five are in our progressive care unit and nine are in our general care unit. And as we've uh, emphasized earlier, we have expanded our hours and uh, the number of people we can see in our drive-through. So we have seen those numbers uh, grow a little bit yesterday, but I would encourage people to please get screened if you're having those symptoms and go through that screening. You can use the easy visit or through your primary care doctor and then uh, that uh, information will be sent and we can have you come through the drive through So we do have the capacity uh, to test additional individuals up to 110 a day.